Ricky Lee and I. We are. Thank y'all for tuning in. <laughs> Did you dye your hair? Like three weeks ago, Natalie. You've seen <gasps> me like this for three weeks. Oh, I'm feeling like a jerk because it looks darker. It looks good. It's I like not, that. It's my eyebrows. It's because I use a darker eyebrow. So oh. That's what it is. Oh, I kept looking at you like, there's just something about Ricky today. I don't know what it is. Like, <laughs> Thought Probably I, I thought my spirit it too. It's you, radiating in my hair. Your well, your spirit is a lot lighter these days. I love it. Um, I was saying I even feel a little more like like I feel like a little more. Oof. It transferred. Yeah. Like okay. I'm a little loopy. I'm a little out there. <laughs> Not that you're loopy, but you know what I'm saying. Just sedated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just well, we're coming from a weekend of Mother's Day events. Yes. Yes. How's your Mother's Day? Quiet. It was quiet. I like that. I got a great, reliable card from my girls. Oh. Always with the hits and the tears. Yeah. And uh, a pair of socks with pandas oh. and little, you know, little pandas on a computer. Oh, that's cute. And then my brother brought over some lunch. Mm. So we got to hang out with my mom and yeah. chop it up a little bit. Yeah. And that was it. I yeah. just... Pretty much stayed in bed for the rest of the day and watched Shit's Creek over and over again. I love that show so much. I've heard that it's hilarious. Greatest I, show ever. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Oh, I'll put mm-hmm. it on my watch list. But yeah, it That's just good. doesn't... Is it better than The Office? I have um, to compare everything to The Office. I put it right up there to The Office. Okay. So it's The Office, Parks and Rec, and Shit's Creek. Okay. Top three for me. All right. For I'll, sure. I'll have to put it on there. Yeah. So that's what I did. <laughs> and then I like that. Short, sweet. Avoided interaction with people at Leave all costs. Leave me alone. Yes, Sometimes exactly. you need that. I definitely did. So Good. I, I'm really glad for you because I like, and people have heard us on this podcast. Ricky needs a day off. Ricky needs a day off. <laughs> Ricky needs to do. I took Leave five. her alone. I took five days off. Good for you. So Now, I didn't get my mom anything for Mother's Day on I Sunday. I didn't either. I didn't really? Either. I didn't. This is the first year that I don't buy her anything. My mom got me a plant. Oh, great. Yeah. But I think she liked oh. it more. So she could. It's like Cause I, did, I just, yeah, it was, <laughs> I just left it there. So she's like, well, since you didn't like it, I'm taking it. And I never said Aww. I didn't like the plant. Oh, you offended but her. what I did do was, so Monday was Mexican Mother's Day. Right, right. So I did go and I bought her um, two rare and exotic plants. Ooh. to challenge her plant game. Yeah. Because she's mastered every plant in this household. So I'm like, you know what? Let me get you some. And now I'm just waiting for her to tell me where she wants to put some of them because I got to dig a hole and, you know. Yeah. And I oh, know they're she, outdoor plants. One of them is. Okay. So I know okay. she's going to enjoy ordering me around and telling me where to put it. Oh. So. Well, as good moms should. Yeah. I don't know what got into <laughs> me this year. I I don't know if, like, I was just over capacity or just thought, like, Mother's Day. Not that it's overrated. Don't. Don't come after me. But I really felt like we spent all this money. We just got to love our mothers all year long. All the time. You know? Yeah. And so I I originally told my sister, because usually my sister and I will plan out like, okay, let's give her, like we give her a gift together. Right. And we'll like we'll split it or whatever. We'll like, hey, you'd go half and I'll go half or hey, I'll go pick this up. That's what you usually up. do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so this year it kind of came in late and last minute I was like, hey, what are we getting for my mom? And then my sister's like, oh, well, um, there was this um, this florist that we like. Oh, she's fully booked this year. And I'm like, how did we miss that? Hmm. And then this little shit, she, my sister, <laughs> sorry, Kelly. Um, so, I'm, so I walk into the house like, hey, I'm here, because I go over to my mom's house. And then, oh, mom, happy, happy Mother's Day. Love you. Give her a hug. And then my sister comes out and she has like a gift for her. And I'm like, you <gasps> motherfucker. Like you didn't even, you didn't even. Did you tell, tell her? Me? Did you call her on no, it? No, no, I didn't because I didn't want to like Hell. in front of my mom. Like I didn't want to cause a scene or make my mom like. <laughs> Did you give her that on? glare? But I, I didn't even look at her any kind of way. I was like, oh, wow, Kelly, that's a really nice gift. Good, good so let you. me ask you this. When you usually plan for the gift, is it you reaching out to her first Saying, hey, what are we going to do for mom or her to you? I think it's mostly me. Okay. I, I've done that 
for the last God knows how many, my brother, and I know he's, it's always going to be the same answer. Oh, no. Yeah. Or <laughs> we're just going to do this. Yeah. yeah. Anything I've ever suggested, it <laughs> never goes. Like, yeah. okay, and I'll usually say this. Let's take mom, my mom likes to go to breakfast in the morning, yeah. right? Let's yeah. take mom to breakfast. No. <laughs> it's always no. Yeah. Yeah. And we've never been able to get on the same page about like, let's do something for mom. It's always, it always ends up being like. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to bring lunch over and that's it. Right, and What right. he says goes and that's it. So yeah. Well, I would love to have some pool one day on decision making. I, I don't know how my sister and I have become so cordial. I guess it's just something that we've done forever and we always have had to. It makes sense. It. Yeah. Work together. Yeah, we just, it's easier. Hey, and we're even here and yeah. love us equally. But now my sister's trying to win the title of like best daughter in the world. Sideswiped you out of yeah. nowhere. So, here, mom, I got you a little <laughs> something. And then my mom was like, oh my God, Kelly. And I was like, Oh, hell no. I can't even remember now what she gave her. I think she must have given her like a candle and I don't know. I honestly can't remember now. But we all know who the favorite is and it's definitely not me. It's definitely not me either. So maybe it's an older sibling thing. Is it? Maybe. Look, I I don't know about you, but our relationship, my relationship with my mom is so different than the relationship with my sister, the, the one that she has, my right. mom, with my sister. My mom and my sister are so tender with each other. Oh, and like, yeah. So, mm. like, lovey and affectionate, you know, mother-daughter type. And with my mom and myself, it's really cold. And yeah. it's like, what are you doing? Okay, you're fine? Okay, bye. <laughs> okay, and then, like, my sister and my mom cry together. They cry at each other. They fight with each other. And my mom and I are just kind of like, oh, you're not having a good... Oh, I got to go. You you must be in a bad mood. I got to go. Wow. Yeah. It's very different. I wouldn't say that my mom is tender with my brother, like, to that. But I yeah. know that they have a stronger connection yeah. than, like, her and I have. Yeah. It's definitely... I think she's probably more loving and compassionate with him. She's going to kill yeah. me for saying this, but right. but for sure. And uh, just harder on me in general. But that's how typically it goes. You're kind of harder on your daughters in the first place. Yeah. I, I threw, at least that's been my experience. So. so you, so, okay. My mom and I have, we're, our experience is a little more, uh, you know, kind of iffy. And we are, what is the word that I'm trying to find? We just tolerate each other, I guess you Has could say. Has assault. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We tolerate each mm-hmm. other. <laughs> okay. You say past the salt. Well, with my sister, she like pours her the salt. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, you know, yes. Uh, like, oh, Mija, is it okay? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right? And so right. now, okay, so you have that similar experience with um, when you see how she treats you, how she treats your brother. But yeah. now you have kids. Yes. You have two daughters. Mm-hmm. But your oldest is this son, male. Right. So how does the, so how's that? So do you treat your son a little more stern because he's the oldest, a stricter? Or the how's the relationship there? Here's the story that sticks out to me okay. um, when you bring this up. Okay. So the last two years, my I think it's been two years, my son's been living with his father. Okay. And so the girls and I have spent a significant amount of time, you know, intimately, like different. Mm -hmm. It's the first time I've been not had all three of my kids live in the same roof. Mm -hmm. So I obviously see my son less. Mm -hmm. Now, in his, in in that home, I would describe the, you know, the energy as very focused on like men, very accommodating to men. Like, Mm -hmm. let me get you this, let me get you that, you know. Yeah. That's kind of the household that's how it is. Yeah. And I remember one day my son came over to the house and he was telling my daughters, serve me some soda. Do this, do that, do this. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. First of all, Ooh. you can serve yourself. This yeah. is your home. Like you don't have to ask anybody to give you anything. You can get up and grab whatever it is that you want and serve yourself. Right. But I will not have you speaking to your sisters like that. Like right. back up, right? Yeah. Which caused more tension yeah. in an already, you know, sensitive sensitive relationship that I have with my son. Yeah. But that's when I realized, like, you become the influence that you're around. 
Now, my son wasn't raised, like in my household, that's not how my son was raised. Yeah. But the predominant examples that he was being given and what he was seeing was that. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so I wasn't going to allow him to come into our space and speak to his sisters like that. Right, right. Which is the complete opposite than what I grew up, Mm. you know, witnessing or being expected to do. If somebody asks me to do something, give me that, then I'm going to do it. And I'm not going to say, hey, you can get up and get it yourself. Right. Right. So that's been the difference. And I know that my son would probably say I'm significantly harder on him than I am with my daughters. And I would say that. I would definitely say that because it's like two things that I'm trying to instill in him. Number one, just being a respectful human being Mm. and healing from his own traumas that he had to see with, you know, my divorce from his father and the different examples that he's had and having a lack of a a male role model in his life. Uh I mean, he has all the odds against him. Right. So I have all of that in the back of my mind. What I don't realize or do realize and don't practice enough is that in my own, you know, discernment for that. Yeah. In wanting and pushing him and poking him yeah. and wanting desperately it's pushing wanting him, him away it. even further. Ah. Right? Yeah. And so that's where like what what I believe my mom is doing to me, like I'm doing to Ooh. my son. And talk about generational trauma and differences. That is a perfect example and of changing that. and changing the the paradigm, I guess, right? Because yeah, for us, we would say that that pressure is on, you know, like me being a female and the oldest, right, right. And I'm switching it here, and it's I'm projecting it to my son. Yeah, yeah. And that takes a lot of work to even discover people. So I don't think people like the majority of the world doesn't even ever get the opportunity to realize that that's what's happening. Right. Um, So my Mother's Day, um, it was myself, my sister, my mom, my uncle, her brother, and then my uh, one of my other aunts, her sister. My mom has a big family. She's, um, I think, a total 11 brothers and sisters, the majority female. (laughs) And um, long story short, um, I kind of, you know, I'm at the point of my life where I just want, I'm just over here, like trying to get questions out and discover, yeah, how, how we came to be and what traumas they've experienced in their lives so that I can better understand them. Right. And so, um, so we came to a moment where I asked, where, well, not, I didn't ask. I told them, I told my, my aunt and my uncle and my mom, I was like, you know, we don't talk enough about the shit that we've experienced in our lives and we don't tell our kids um, what we've experienced. And I think that that's important because once our kids see, um, or for example, myself as, you know, a daughter and, you know, the niece, um, I say, if, if I could understand you guys and what you guys have been through, I feel less enraged (laughs) and I have a little more compassion Compassion. for you guys. Understanding, comprehension. Okay, cool. Yeah. Let me practice empathy or sympathy or whatever it is. As soon as I say those words, and so just to give a little bit of context, um, we were talking about um, my grandpa, their dad. Um, The story that I know is that he was very mean. He was a very mean man. Oh, just... You know, he he was physically abusive to all of his children, talked poorly um, about them to them, even with my grandma, just the worst of the worst, right? And so all of the stories that I hear about my grandpa are that. They're not exactly the best. Um, and so we were talking about my grandpa, and then I say those things, right? I say like, hey, we need to know these stories because we need to just understand where This you is what you said from. on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh, okay. And as soon as I say that, All three of them, my mom, my aunt, and my uncle start bawling in tears. What? Because what was happening is that they've they've kept that inside. They've repressed it. Yes. They're not they're not talking about their story. And so my uncle starts telling his story about his Your uncle the painter? My uncle the painter, yes, he starts telling his story about his last moments with his dad. Oh my god. And um and come to find out that my uncle was my my grandpa died in my uncle's arms at like when my uncle was he was my uncle was young he must have been in his early 20s and yeah and those were his last moments um my uncle got really sick um apparently for many years and he just kind of got worse and worse and worse and so finally 
yeah, the last moments um, w- was that with my uncle. And so my uncle starts crying. And, oh, my God. And then my aunt starts, And then we're all crying, right? But it's so good because he kind of stops himself like he didn't want to cry. And I was like, it's okay, Theo. Like, let it out. Like, that's that's the part of letting go and being free and um and recognizing that it was really heavy it was really heavy and then and then we got into just like the traumas that some of my cousins have experienced their kids yeah and I tell them too I tell them that because them well all three of them you know my aunt my uncle my mom they're all divorced and they all have kids and so coming from divorced parents I tell them I'm like look I think that and they all have very difficult relationships with their children my cousins like, look, I think that it's important that you guys speak your piece, say your part, because if not, they're, they're always going to come at you um, the wrong way. And so if you experience something difficult with, with your, you know, with your ex, your ex-wife, ex-husband at that time, you need to let your kids know there's some grown-ass adults and they need to understand that it wasn't just them that had trauma from the divorce. You know, we're human beings. We're going to experience some trauma in our, in, in that relationship too. Were your grandparents married? Um, so the story is that my grandparents are married, but my grandma was 15 years younger than my grandpa. So my grandma was, I think about 14 and he se la robó. Interesting. (laughs) Um, he took her away and then they had babies, a whole lot of them. Okay. So, but they maintained being married the entire time. Right, 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 right. And I don't know if that was, you know, if they were, he was fully faithful and all of that. And I say that because one of the stories that came up too, that my, um, that my, um, my uncle and my aunt was saying was that my grandma was very naive. Well, and she was so, 14. Right, right, right. And, you know, and she didn't... Is your grandma still alive? She is. She's not... Dude, I want to meet your grandma. Yes. Where does she I live? Have, I feel like you've met my grandma. No, I feel like I haven't. I feel like you've met my grandma. No. Well, maybe you haven't. Uh, you'll meet my grandma. She's, um, she lives in, in Moreno Valley, Paris area. She's right here. Um, and she loves to travel. She's always in Mexico. I, I think, in fact, she's in Mexico now. I need to meet your um, grandma. Yeah, she's just this... Beautiful human being. I am, I just, fun fact, I am currently growing out my hair because of her. Because she actually um, had very, very long, luscious hair, like below, like I think at her knees. Wow. And she always had to have it braided and up in a, some type of bun. Okay. Because my grandpa was very jealous. And, you know, hair is a big thing. And, oh, that's like a. Oh, of course. You know, it's a very, very intimate sexy. thing. Yes. Yes, mm-hmm. no one's going to look at your beautiful hair. So she always had it braided, kind of like a little Frida Kahlo deal. Stop. Braided and then up in a little bun. Yeah, I have to look for pictures. So you're growing it out to honor to her honor and grandma. like wearing yes. it luxuriously. Yes. How, how does she yes. wear her hair now? Oh, she's she has really short hair now. But my grandma. So that's... I have so, so many questions for your grandmother when I meet her. Yeah, no, so do I. So do I. Um, it's, it's incredible. Um, yeah, we're going to have to, you know what? We're going to have to have her on this podcast. Seriously. Because yeah. be 14 years old, you get yeah. married and then pop the kids out? Yeah. Like, that's yeah. crazy. Yes, yes. And oh, my poor grandma, she's... Because imagine what her story was. Like yeah. what mother lets her 14-year-old child go? Right. But then you right. have to consider the time. Yeah. Yes, very different. Yeah, and supposedly, like, my my uncle goes, no, ella quería, ella se fue. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, mm, sneaky, <laughs> sneaky. She wanted that freedom. Take me away. I can see that. Can see that. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess the moral of the story here is you got to you, you talk to your kids. And talk to your mom. And Yeah, and that's where, like, sharing, I think that that was one of the most, like, deep conversations that I've had, even with my mom. Right. Um, like more vulnerable, and it was cute. She was like, "Ella, uh, escuchen, ustedes escuchen, like listen, listen to her, like, to, to you, me, to me, right?" Mm. She's telling them this, my my uncles, and she goes, "Es que ella fue a la, ella fue a la escuela para esto, ella estudió, ella sabe." And I'm like, "So, but I actually didn't." But I was, it was cute that she's like, "Everyone, right?" So how did that make you feel? It felt so good I was like oh she believes she believes in you yeah and we've never had um any kind of affirmation like that 
So it was very, so I felt very special. And Did you tell her thank you? No, no. This goes back to the conversation I, I was know. telling with Michael Mora. Like, tell the people, if you if you share a special moment with somebody, yeah. tell yeah. them. Big Brother Jake and I do that all the time. Oh, thank you. They, yeah. <laughs> like, that's how you yeah. fuel each other. And that's how you know you're headed in the right direction. Yeah. And then it just, you build off of that. Yeah. That's so important to do. We do not do that enough. And why? So We don't. Why? So, so I'm thinking to myself, like, why didn't I tell her? And I think that maybe I didn't tell her because I don't know an example of that. Or, like, I have, like, she hasn't told me. I haven't told her. So I, it feels kind of like, uh, 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 Right. Like, so so now, this? tonight, right, you'll call her and you'll say, hey, yes. I just want to tell you thank yes. you. Yes. Because you called me out in this moment and it made me feel important, acknowledged, and seen. Yeah. And that you believe that what I talk about is important right right yeah you know thank what? you I, I do have to call her yes because that's going her. to encourage her and maybe make her practice more telling you those things because mm-hmm. she might not be mm-hmm. used to doing that right which goes back to an evolving relationship with our mothers <sighs> and sometimes we have to take the lead with that yes you're absolutely actually probably right. most times now yeah. we have to take the lead yeah. with that and i think yeah. about that because like you know our mothers raised us right and I think like, okay, like my mom's getting older. Mm-hmm. So I'm seeing some of the changes in her. And I'm thinking, all right, like preparing myself mentally yeah. to know, okay, how, what kind of care is my mom going to need later on Right. that I want to be there? Because, mm-hmm. you know, she took she, the podcast that you sent me today are the very first relationship that we have is with our mothers. Yes. Yes. That's it intense. Is. It, we don't realize how big that is. Yeah. And we, our mother is everything to us. She's our friend. She's our hero. She's the one that we look up to for everything. And she she takes care of us. I would say that my mom feels like 90% she's all... Because I wouldn't necessarily say that... Like, the friendship part of it... Like, I like to make my mom laugh. Whenever I can make my mom laugh, it cracks me up and I I like that. Yeah. We don't have enough moments like that. I would say Mm -hmm. that... Like 90% of our relationship is I'm her daughter. Yeah. I'm a 40-year-old child still to <laughs> my mother. Like I'm yeah. not a 40-year-old independent Adult. person and this is my mother. Right. No. We still have that very much like I am your mother. You will respect me. Listen to me. And I don't care what your opinion is. Yeah. This is what it is. Yeah. So my changing that – and I would like to change that because – I think that there's a lot of other things that my mom and I could engage in and, and yeah. take part in. But it's also me not wanting to cross that boundary with her. That's scary. Where it's, it is scary because I don't want to go attempt something with her and then get shut down and yeah. be like, you see? The fear of rejection. The fear of rejection. That's very real. Yeah. I'd rather, I would much rather keep the, you know, the okay-ish relationship I have with my mom to right. try and test any type of water. Because it's sensitive. And and we already look, you know, back to this, like, our our mother is our first, what did you say? For the first relationship we have is with our mothers. Right. And in the womb. Right. We, we're so loyal to that. We don't want to fuck it up even more. No. We don't know. I'm not good right here. I'm good. Hey, mom. Yeah. I love you. Okay, bye. That's it. See, and I don't want to do that. Yeah. Meaning that's where I'm at. You're right. Where it's like. No, that's where I'm at. But too. I don't, but I don't want to necessarily have that. Super, you know why? Because I don't want to have that relationship with my daughters. Yeah, and this is why I am grateful to my mom because all the things that the you know non-conforming things. Right. I'm like, okay, this is what I don't want to do with, uh, with my daughters. Yeah. This is how I don't want to speak to my daughters. This is right. how I don't want to treat them. Yeah. But then I also honor what my mom's been through, what she's you know mm-hmm. her life, her story, her life, her story. Yeah. And be like, okay, cool. The generation is getting better either way, so I'm gonna just. You know, take take what what I can get, and that's it. Would you say that you have a pretty good understanding of your mom's life? Yes, yes, I would say that I do. My mom's a writer, so she mm. like, and so so is my dad. But my mom's a, a great writer. I love how she writes. I wish she would write more. I'm probably gonna encourage her to like. Oh, there it is. Write her memoirs or something. Beautiful writer. Yeah. Um. But yes, I think I believe I have a good grasp of story Mm -hmm. as I've gotten older certain things have started to make sense Ah. things I didn't see before 
Yeah. I'm starting to see now. And I'm like, okay. And then I accept more that that's just how she is in certain things. And there's nothing I can do about it. Mm -hmm. And I resign to that. Mm -hmm. Or then I find little pockets of opportunity where I see her bending like, okay, there's an opportunity here yeah. for her to see something differently. Yeah. And I dive in. Like, yeah. I'm like, all <laughs> in. I'm going to see all, I'll ask all the questions. Yeah, but more recently, I think I've discovered that my mom is still very super tender about her, her past and about yeah. her story. Mm. And I think that she has a lot of um, healing that she's starting to do now. You yeah. know, that she hadn't really, and mm, I say that she hadn't because it wasn't really visible to me. Right. Because it was it was consist she was consistent in the way she was. Yeah. Now, like I said, I'm starting to see little tiny little baby changes. Yeah. And I'm like, that is happening only because she's willing to get uncomfortable right. with right. making peace with her past. Right. So I'm proud of her for doing that. And I encourage okay. her and I want her to do it more. Good. But I have to be very careful because I'm very abrasive. Yeah. And my mom is not. Yeah. So sometimes my <laughs> abrasiveness just pounds and piles through, yeah. you know, tender little Gladys Moda. Yeah. And she's over here like, just wait, give me a second. Yeah. I'm not there yet. I'm yeah. not there yet. Yeah. Yeah. We want, I don't know why we push, push our own agendas on our parents. Like, I'm changing or I'm, I'm aware of this. Why aren't you? Just look at it now. See it. See yeah. it through. Don't you see? But it's heavy. It is heavy, and I think it also depends on the type of relationships you have with people. Mm -hmm. The types of relationships that I like to have with people are those that are constantly evolving. Yeah. Those that are constantly saying, what about this? And I don't care what your age is. If right. you're older, younger, whatever. Yeah. If you're bringing something to the relationship that I can learn from and grow, yeah. that's what I want. Yeah. That's not the case with my mom. Ooh. <laughs> it's like I said, she's my mom. I got to respect her, and there are those boundaries. Mm. So that's why it's been challenging, I think, for her and I to... Get on the same page. She's a creature of habit. Yeah. And a very, I made her take the personality uh, oh, test. Uh-huh. And it compared her personality to that of Queen Elizabeth. Oh. Yeah. A matriarch. Oh. Above all, where it's like, <laughs> this is this. And I don't give a fuck what you think. Right. This is what's going to happen. Right. Right. And she's little. So uh. that's scary. That's why I call her Gladys the Gladiator. I'm afraid of my mother. Oh my. As you should be. Still to this day. I'll be afraid of our mothers. I don't want to be afraid of my mother. I just want to hug. <laughs> Same. Same. I just want to hug. <laughs> there was a time when... Um, um, my mom, I'm telling you, like, we were just very, just to keep it above water, and you're good, I'm good, cool. I think, um, what were we doing? I don't know, but she, I came at her in all of my healing, right? Mom, you treated me like this, and this isn't fair, and this wasn't right, and how come, and how come, and how come? Pues... Natalie, you know what I'm I don't know what to tell you. Um, it is what it is. Um, yeah, very unapologetic. Like, mama, I got that from a <laughs> Yeah. And I was like, so you mean to tell me that I'm all of this hurt and you're not going to... I expected an apology from her, I guess. And then she didn't apologize. And I was like... See, I didn't even expect an apology. Fuck? I didn't even expect that. All I wanted was just to be like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I get it. Yeah. I didn't even expect an apology. Just could you just... Hear me out. Me? Just acknowledge it. That's yeah. it. Just yeah. acknowledge it. But I think that's a generational thing too. Yes. Is it? Yes. I mean, because, I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I'm saying I don't know because like yeah. I told you earlier. Yeah. My kids will tell me like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. What the hell? Like you hurt me like this. I'll listen. I'll be yeah. like, okay, well explain this. Right. How did I do this? How could I be a better parent? Mm -hmm. That's what you do. Yeah. But again, different generations. Yeah. I also hear like other parents will tell their kids. Well, you're an adult now. You have your own life to live. Um, get over it. Get past it. Oh, I hate that one. And I'm like, but they're still caring. It's kind of like the example that you gave me earlier about like, but I'm still this 40-year-old adult, adult child. Adult child. <laughs> I'm still not getting past it. You're still it. ordering me around. Yeah. 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 You're We're, still scolding me. So I'm crazy. still making decisions to try to get your approval. Right. Right. <laughs> right. 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 At 40. I don't want to go 30. into 40 yet like that, though. That's my goal. Oh, I'm, one, I'm only one month got, away. That's what I was that's say, next got a month. month. I'm coming. one month away. It's what coming. a perfect time for a breakdown. It's <laughs> coming. I think, um, you know, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, doesn't Ooh, that. God is good. Doesn't that usually. Oh, my gosh. You know what? You're having. Um, a midlife crisis? 
it's not a midlife crisis, quarter life crisis, but it's one of those crises. Three you're of you're a hitting life. um the, your end of time. Your decade is ending. So is, that, is that what this is? Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that's it. Right? What'd you say, Bartley? I said over the hill crisis. Okay. Yes. Is that we're having that? one of these crises? And oh, there are multiple. <laughs> and um, it's here, girl. It's here. Yeah. My what's I always ask my kids for their birthdays. I'm like, what do you want to accomplish in this year of life? Girl, tell me. I know what I want to accomplish. What is it? Not to be the 40 year old child to my parents. No, that's it. No more. Definitely not that. that. And that'll. But take do you have any say so in that? Like I have if, all the say so in no, that. But if your parents like view you and treat you that way, do you have like any power to change? I do. I I can choose not to react a certain way and I can choose to not make choices that are going to accommodate to what they would like for me. Mm. So in that regard, it, it, it all comes down to me. Yeah. It really does. And I can't hold them accountable or even responsible because I was right there, right along with it. Mm -hmm. And that's why we always say like, as a parent, you do the best that you can. Yeah. And you don't even see what's happening. Right. So yeah, that's my, that's my goal. Yeah, I would definitely yeah. say that. I mean, you could definitely hold yourself accountable. Whether or not your parents continue or not to treat you as such, you have already moved past it. I right. am now a 40-year-old adult. So I am going to speak to you in, in my 40-year-old adult way. Right. Um, Which I, I don't even know what that's going to feel like. I don't even know. Meaning for me, I'm just taking it like the fact that I'm aware of it now. Yeah. Yes. It's yeah. like one step that's at a it. time because I was going to overwhelm myself. Well, now what? Like, what yeah. does this mean exactly? And how am I going to practice this? Or how am I going to do this? Yeah. The way that I showed up, um, I mean, I'm, I'm not 40 yet, but <laughs> I will be one day. Um, and so when I stopped being treated like a 20s, well, you, you, adult child. Adult child. Um, so from my mom, it was, it, it came from me, right? I had to kind of like what you said, I'm not going to give you the reaction that you want. I am not going to talk to you the way that I've been talking to you because clearly that's not working and you're treating me like a child and I don't want to be treated like a child, but because the way that I've been conditioned to speak to you has only been in my childlike ways. Right. So then I ended up changing my tone and then it was, I kind of didn't take her shit. I'm like, I kind of just looked at her like, mom, what the fuck? I'm just trying to talk to you. And in any, in any scenario, um, our relationship changed in that I wasn't reacting to her anymore. Right. And then she was reacting and she saw that I didn't give that back to her. And I kind of left it there like, oh, okay, that's your reaction. Cool. Close this book. I'm gonna go. And I think that that really changed um our relationship but now I'm in this little phase with her where I I don't know yet how to be more of the adult daughter now that I realize mm. oh damn because do you know what I'm trying to say mm. so like yes I, do. I like what is what is our relationship as adult mother and adult daughter okay well let me ask you this do you have any examples in your life of a mother-daughter relationship where you're like, that's cool. I could do that. Funny, I was just going to ask you the same question. None. Right. I have none. Right. I was, and I was thinking about this in the car, like, what mother-daughter well, figures would I like to be like that are true and genuine? Like, we could look at, you, we could watch TV all day long and say like, oh, that's a perfect mother-daughter example. But in our real lives, what mother-daughter relationships do we see? That are authentically true. That we I like my relationship mm. with my daughters. Meaning, okay. meaning I don't have an example of like what I would like. Yeah. Right? But I like what I'm building with my daughters. Yeah. It's uncomfortable often t more times than not. Yeah. And I, I just try to create a space where they can communicate to me even the things I'm not going to like. You know what? Um, my Mother's Day text message to you was exactly that. Oh, yes. Was that, you know, thank you for being a vulnerable mother and showing me Ooh. how you are in your ways because right. I've seen that and it's actually made me a better daughter to my mom. And shout out to everybody who texts me on Mother's Day. I replied to nobody. I don't even think I sent a happy Mother's Day text to it. Like to, to 
any mother, I don't think I said that. Actually, mm-hmm. no, I did to Michelle from Venice Beach Beverage because I needed to communicate. So I said, happy Mother's Day. That was it. That was it. But I also thought, you know what? I'm sure these mothers would understand this darkness that I'm in right now. Yeah. So they would 100%. Yeah. So now I'm trying to come up with like a standard text that I can shoot out on. I haven't opened hey. these messages yet. And I'm like, that's, you got to do that sometimes. Standard. But that's what it is to be vo- like a vulnerable mother. Right. I'm a person and that's yeah. all I want. I don't want my kids to look at me and be like, that's my mom and I have to respect her because she's my mom. No, I want them to respect me and have an authentic relationship because I'm a person. Yeah. Yeah. And I look at them like people. Like right. they're my kids. Yeah. That's and then it. soon you're going to treat them like young adults because that's where they're going. You or know that's what one is. Right. Oh, God. Two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have two, young, two adult children. Fun. Yeah. Well, two young adult adults. <laughs> I did like that my little one, and she she considers me her best friend. Mm. She tells me all the time, you know, if you and I were the same age, we'd be friends. We'd like, be cool. you cool. Because she's mean. She's a, oh. a mean kid. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. She's not a mean kid. She's a brilliant kid. Yeah. She's so, a sweetheart. What are you she, talking about? She's a sweetheart with a sprinkle of she don't take no shit. That's what it is. Maybe she keeps it's it real with you. She's mean. She yeah, keeps she keeps it real, it real with you. You keep it real with her. Your bond is tight. It is tight. And and you understand I each other. I raised her alone, like meaning like her and her, her father and I were already like uh. so we have a very close bond. But she always regards me like that. She's like, you know, we're best friends. We have just and that I think for That's me awesome. and it's not to say I don't have that relationship with my two oldest. Right. They just came in a different time in my life where right. I I was more of like, this is my mom, mom, yeah. mom, mom, mom. And with her, it was just like, we got it on lock. It's just different, but yeah. But I like our relationship. No, for sure. And and I, it's always going to be different, I'll, you know, with um, the relationship. I was just telling you, the relationship with um, with my sister and my mom, I don't, I don't necessarily think that they're sharing each other's life stories and secrets and blah, blah, blah. But they're definitely more connected. And that's okay. Yeah. That's totally cool. Yeah. That's why well, people are like, oh, who's your favorite? It's so right. Right. And I'm like, my sister's clearly the favorite. <laughs> Sneaking gifts. The fuck? See that's how cold, bitter I Kelly. am? That is cold, See Kelly. How bitter I know. Girl. <laughs> um, but now let's pivot a little bit. Does your dad treat you like? The adult child? No. His, his rela- <laughs> our relationship has drastically changed like the last four years. Okay. It's changed a lot. Okay. Mm, no, I don't think he, I don't think he does. But then again, I don't see my dad as often and I don't interact uh, with my dad as often as I do with my mom. Right. So, but I do look at my dad as like, like I would categorize my dad as my friend. I have oh. very open communication with my dad. I feel like I can be myself a little more in front of him. I'm just realizing that as I'm saying yeah. that because yeah. I, didn't, I didn't really think that fully through. <laughs> but but I'm also, I would proclaim that I am my dad's favorite, mm. which I always said that my Sorry, brother. <laughs> no, and I, I always said that my brother's both of their favorites, but yeah. I, I just have a different bond with my dad. I just have a different connection with him. Yeah. And it just feels right. Mm-hmm. And it I always, you know, it's, it's a collaborative relationship. Yeah. It's a humorous relationship. Yeah. And it's a, I feel like my dad, when he talks to me, it's of genuine interest. Like he wants to know what's going on or right. like, let's talk. Mm-hmm. Where my mom is like, still like a caretaker. Like, what do you need? Mm-hmm. Or how can I help you? Or, you know, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. from a, Ma- it's very motherly, very, very yeah. matriarch. Lee. Is that the word? I, I don't know. But you know what I'm saying, where it's like, you don't have to take care of me. Like, yeah. just talk to me. Yeah. You don't have to take care of me. I got it. Yeah. That's what that's the difference. Yeah. And so, um, so no, I think I think with my dad it's it's quite different. Huh. Yeah. That's interesting. I wonder what Michael Moda would say. About his about him does does he feel like the adult child or does he feel like the adult adult? He might feel like the adult child with my dad, but not with my mom. Ooh. It would be the opposite. Yeah. I definitely see that being the opposite, mm. which is strange. 
And why can't we just be all the same? Like, we're grown-ass people. <laughs> I know. Just stop. That's what I'm trying to get at, too. It's like, <laughs> wait, but we're all adults. I know that when um, the moment that I noticed or realized that um, my dad was treating me like an adult was when I told him that I was getting married, which actually kind of made me a little upset. Why? Because why did I have to get married to feel treated like an adult? Think, just think about the generational part of it. Yeah, you're right. And, yeah. then I, and then I think about my grandma and she's getting married at 14 and my uncle. Said and she both was of your naive. parents are outstanding people. Oh, yeah. They're both oh, very charismatic people, very yeah. just like good natured, oh, good yeah. energy. Yeah, yeah dynamic yeah. people. You know what? I mm. wouldn't want any other parents other than my own. He's, they're all I got. And yeah. I'm only here because of them. Yeah. You know? But yeah, um, once I told my dad that. Um, that I was getting married, he started asking me like money questions and job questions and life questions. How like, old were you? Well, when did I get engaged? 2018. So I was 28, 27, 28. And that was the first time you were having conversation with your dad about that? Yeah. See, I was talking to my dad about that stuff when I was like 17. You see? Yeah. Like how Very different, different that is. And and so, so yeah. And, and I mean, it even goes to the kind of relationship that my dad and I may or may not have still and but at this point for my dad to come in with his vulnerabilities in the in the financial and the and the job and the professional and um and even in his personal life um that he's come to me I'm like oh okay we can bond off mm -hmm. of this stuff yeah we're still not talking about like you and I like you're my dad and I'm your daughter but I mean we're there like we're we're talking we're shooting the shit we're talking about like how are you going to retire? What are you doing So with that's money? important. Making mm -hmm. the break when you can look at your parent as a person and not your parent. Ah. Because that's mm -hmm. when it did start to change with my dad and I. When yeah. I, the first time I went back to Ensenada and I saw yeah. my dad with a completely different life. Yeah. With the first time I like really engaged with Raquel's daughters. Uh -huh. And I was like, what is going on here? Like, yeah. I don't know this man. Right. This is not the dad that I had growing up. Yeah. But I saw how happy he was. Yeah, with this family. Yeah, I like saw how happy him as a family. Was. And that literally forced me to get out of my feels because uh. I became curious about my dad. Uh. I was like, how did this happen? Yeah. And yeah. is there hope for me then? Because right. if he's been married twice, right. has, he's redone like what you said earlier. You could, you're, we're still young. Right. And he's gotten to this po point where he's happy. I want to know. Yeah. And I let go of my pain and my contention and my resentment mm, and then mm -hmm. I saw my dad as a, a person, person. Mm -hmm. yes and yeah. then I was you know flooded him with questions well how did this yeah I haven't made that break with my mom yeah that's what I that's what I need that's hot. yeah and I think I'm on the same boat as you like I think I've figured out like okay I can have this type of relationship with my dad, I can go to him for this. We can ask each other questions. It's cool, calm, collective, as Jasper would say. Mm -hmm. um, but with my mom, it's like, what if I say this? What if I say it wrong? All right. So you brought up Jasper. Jasper, mm -hmm. we actually did a session with my mom mm -hmm. where we were just kind of um, a healing session. Yeah. And Jasper told my mom, you know, Gladys, you've done the best that you can Mm -hmm. that you could have done with your children. Your children are already giving back so much to their communities. They, they are people with love and integrity. Like, yeah. you've done your job already. Yeah. There is nothing left for you to do. Right. <laughs> Just let them go. Yeah. And that's also a part, right, for that relationship to go. Like, both people have to be able to let go. Yeah. And I think my dad's been able to let go. Right. Like, he... he let go, let go. He let go, let go. Mm -hmm. He knows that my brother and I will call him if we need something. And we know that when my dad calls, like, we're going to be there. Yeah. You got to let go and and have faith in how you raised your kids. Yeah. I The troubles that I'm having with my son, I remember calling my dad. And my dad's like, you got You have to let go. You, you've you been a good parent. You've been there. Mm -hmm. You got to have faith in him. He He's your he son. Yes. He is your son. He is made up of you. He will be okay. Yeah. Let go. Ooh. So he did that. Right. Yeah. And that's that's where I think both my mom and I haven't let go. But what are we holding on to? Right. That's the question. <laughs> yeah. What are we holding on to? The pain, the suffering that that connects us. 
That's what we've that been bonds able to bond us. over. Yeah. Mm. Fuck. Damn it. I hate this. I need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, I guess, you know what? Like, we just got to heal the shit with our parents or... And this is so, and you know what? We're so blessed, dude, to have the relationships that we have with mm-hmm. our parents, no matter how, you know, great or not that they are, because you know we all know people in our in in our um, in our network that um, either you know their parents passed on, or they don't know who their parents are, yeah. or they don't even want to hear them their name or see them in a picture because they'll just lose their mind and yeah. like they can't stand their parents. So we got it pretty good. Yeah, we do. We got it pretty good. And um and we love our parents. I mm-hmm. love my mom and I love my dad. And it, it's always gonna be a work in progress. And um it goes back to we were saying this last week that um healing is um it's a progress and it never ends and we learn and relearn and unlearn um, the patterns and we just got to keep reminding ourselves that our parents did the best that they could. We're doing the best that we can. We're still trying to learn this shit. And we have to break the cycle. We have you to. have to break the man rage cycle. Oh, absolutely. Just like I have to heal with, with my mom so that we don't, that we heal and we don't transfer that energy to the, the next generation. Right. We have to break those cycles. Right. Absolutely. Because we know better now. We got to do better. Yeah. I yeah. can see that the generations before us were raised completely different, completely right. different mindset, completely different everything. Right. But now we know. Yeah. So the yeah. goal is just to get better. We have to. And one thing is acknowledging. Like, I think I've been telling you for a while now, like, I got to deal with the shit with my mom. I got to fix it. I yeah. got to fix it. I got to fix it. But here I am still like, I got to fix it. I told you, sick I gotta of this do shit. it. Just do it. I Nike, do it. put your shoes on. Yeah, I actually ended up um, booking a session with Jasper too because that's my my. I have to write a like, whole review on that because yeah. that in itself needs its own podcast. No, it does, and it's coming. We just oh gotta, my god, we have to record it. Yeah, but yeah, that that'll be soon to come. Yes, but um, happy Mother's Day to happy all the mothers, mothers all the mother figures, um, everyone Every in day. our lives that have given us something, some kind of love, affection, attention. We love y'all. Yep. That was it. Increase the peace, y'all. Thank you for tuning in. Um, Listen to us everywhere that you get your podcasts. Google, Apple. Spotify. Spotify. All of those fun ones at Podbean. Um, If you have any um, recommendations for topics on this frequency at gmail.com. And then you can follow us on the Instagrams. Instagrams. And on the YouTubes and on the Twitch, just put in on this frequency, you'll find us. That's a wrap, y'all. Bye.